<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and welcome to this episode of Let's Repair, where this is a series where I take game consoles that are broken and I attempt to repair them. Now, this is not going to be a conclusive guide by any means. This is just me figuring out what the problem is, or trying to diagnose it, seeing what I can do to fix it, and hopefully, by the end of the episode, having a repaired system. Uh, now, spoiler alert, really by the end of this episode, this should be repaired right here. Uh, I like to try and make sure that there is a happy ending to these episodes, so I mostly try and make sure that the system is repaired. I think the only exception was uh, when I had the episode with four GameCubes. Uh, one or two of them I couldn't get working 100%, uh, but the other ones were just focused on one system. It did go from me going from start to finish, from broken to working. Uh, so we have an Xbox 360 right here, something that if you follow the channel for a while, I have obviously had a bit of a love and a passion for, I guess you can say. I have a lot of Xbox 360 related content on this channel, and this is the first time I've ever had a Let's Repair episode about an Xbox 360. So on this we're going to be fixing up the open tray error, or at least I'm going to try to. Uh, this is a Jasper motherboard, it has a light on DVD drive. I end up getting this for really nothing. And it, of course, as I said, it has Jasper motherboard, so I want to hold on to it. The, dis the issue is I've never played a game on here because the disk drive doesn't work. I've even opened up the disk drive, I've cleaned it, I've flashed it so it can play backup games, it's ready to go, uh, but I can't play an actual disk on it, funny enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the diagnosis with you all, uh, turning on the system right here, and I'm going to show you all uh, the console behavior. So waiting for all this to boot up, let me go ahead and open this, and I'm just going to grab a game now. You want to pay attention, first off, you're diagnosing to see if it's a laser issue or not. You want to kind of pay attention to the orientation of the disc. As you can see, I'm just kind of putting it in from the top right there. And I'm going to shut up here when I put this in and just try and listen for the disc drive sounds. All right, so that's about it. It makes, you know, a couple er er sounds and then it spins up and that's about it. As you can see, it did spin successfully, so I don't believe, you know, any of the other moving parts are the issue. It's mainly just the laser right here. Uh, let me also show you all the screen directly, too. So I know everything is all incorrect on here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop the disc in. And that's it. That's all it does. As you can see, it reads for about two to five seconds, and then it gives me open tray. So that is exactly what the open tray error is, and that is what we're going to try and fix up here. And with that out of the way, uh, now that we've diagnosed it, I believe it's going to be a broken laser. So I actually have a replacement laser right here. This is a IHOP 14XX model laser that uh, I just grabbed off eBay. You can get these for less than five bucks. I paid like four dollars and I paid just under five dollars for this free shipping within the United States. Um, so I'll remember to put a link down below in the description. And of course, since it's the light on drive, the light on and BenQ drives for the FAT360 share the same laser, which is also pretty nice. So if you have to fix one of those, just try and do a laser replacement. Now I will say this, I do actually have a guide showing how to do this on the channel. It's been several years since I've done it though. I think the last time I did it was probably like around the time I made that guide. So if you're looking for a tutorial on how to do this, I'm gonna have a link down below in the description. I'm also probably gonna have a card on screen somewhere if this is on YouTube. Uh, but I do have a tutorial showing how to actually repair this. So if you're just wanting to know how to do it, I have a video on that. But if you're wanting to see Let's Repair, well, let's try and repair this thing. So uh, let me go ahead and rip the system open. All right, so time to rip this system open. So figured I would just do this on camera here anyways. Uh, we don't have a hard drive on the system, so that's one less thing to take off, but go ahead, poke these here. And for anybody who's wondering, this is no magic. This is just, you can get this for like a dollar too. It's an Xbox 360 opening tool. You can also just do this with regular tools for the most part, but I use this because one, I got it for free years and years ago, and two, I mean, it just, it makes opening 360s a lot easier. So I prefer to use this tool right here. Unless it's a slim, then... You know, I'll use the executor toolkit I got. So, take these off. Let me see. I was gonna say I've kind of almost memorized where these are, but sometimes these tabs will still fool me just a bit. All right, now let's go ahead, crack these back tabs up in here. And this is where it helps out quite a bit because you could just do all those at once. There's a small crack right here that was probably caused by me before, but it's all good, not that worried about it. 
All right, so all bolts are removed. Now kind of flip this over here. And there's a few tabs you can release. Actually, let me just get this way. I'm kind of just going all over right now. <laughs> Come on. Eh, fingernails save me. Come on. All right, there we go. So there, those are all done. Now we get to remove six of the screws in here. And these are all just torque, so I'll go ahead Remove the eject button, because we're not going to need that for now, at least. And let's take out the six that we need. So I'm not even going to do a full disassembly of this system, because honestly, I don't need to. I just need to rip that drive out and open it, and we'll see what we can do. All right, so got these six screws out. Let's go ahead and move them over to the side here, and I'm going to flip this over once more. Open it up, and there we go, ta-da. Now, I took all the dust bunnies out of here before, so the system's not looking disgusting here. And it is a DG16D2S, which is, of course, a light-on drive. The one thing that gets people confused, it says Philips and light-on. It's not classified as a Philips drive, it's classified as a light-on drive, at least in the modding community here. So, I'm going to now just remove this, and that's all. I don't need the system right now. So I'm going to move that to the side, but I do need to crack open, let's see, did I open this? You know what? Okay, it looks like I did. I kind of had to look off camera here, but it looks like I have opened this up before. I kind of second guessed it because that warranty seal doesn't look like... It's ripped, okay. It's ripped, but it was ripped off clean enough where it fooled me for a few seconds, but... Then again, I've never really cared about the warranty seals on the disk drives all too much because, you know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> if, you, if you rip it over, open the system, it's not really going to matter with the disk drive. All right, so got my toolkit here. Let me go ahead, remove these four screws. So that is one, two, number three should be right here. Come on. And fourth one should come out easy enough. Ah. It's more I'm having the issue at that point. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and rip this thing apart. And yeah, no, that came off clean before. And this is modded. You can't tell it is, but trust me, it is. The firmware's been modified on there. Uh, and that's just my own doing. Uh, so, now what we get to do is take off the entire casing on here. There we go. Oh, yep. There we go. All right. And yeah, I've done some cleaning on this before. Uh, tried to clean up the laser and everything, um, but that wasn't doing anything on this end. So let me go ahead and unlock the drive, which we just do that. It lowers and check that out we have access. All right, so we got a bit more light here, but uh, what I'm gonna do is still have this all open. Uh, I'm going to just move this over to the side here and we're going to mess with the laser a little bit. Now, I have some bad news for you all. Unfortunately, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, this is just gonna be really easy. All I need is a screwdriver. No, 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 no. You're actually gonna need to get a uh, soldering iron out at one point. As you can see, I don't know how well you all can see it. I'm gonna zoom in here. So if you all can see, I'm going to point to it to with a pin right there. There is a big giant solder blob. At least to me, it's big and giant. Uh, yeah, you need to get rid of that. So we're gonna to have to desolder a little bit. Uh, and then once you do that, you can use this laser. If you attempt to do this, if you just pop this in as is, uh, you're still gonna have an issue. It's not going to work uh, because that is there to, it's, it's an anti-static protection measure. Uh, so really, when you do that, it's just preventing the laser from working and preventing any static buildup, so to speak. Uh, so we need to disable it by removing it so we can actually use the damn thing. So let me go ahead and spend a few seconds with the soldering iron and get that all removed. Aside from that, though, uh, just inspecting the laser, I have looked at it before. Looks good to me so far. We won't know for sure. Uh, well, I mean, I could ohm test it, but I'm going to trust the seller here. We won't know for sure 100% until we pop it in, so let's do this. All right, so as we speak, the soldering iron right here is heating up. 
looks like we're good on all that. Just want to make sure I'm not going to melt any of that stuff right here. Uh, but it's almost done preheating. Let me go ahead and tin it off camera. All right. So now, really for this, all we need to do is, let me even adjust this a bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. So all I'm going to do for this is, I'm going to put it there like so. Heat this up if I can. Come on. Okay, there. Let me clean this up here. Let me double check all these points, make sure they are disconnected. They look clean enough to me. All right, and let me run this through one more time. All right. Okay. I know it's been a while since I've done this, so I'm almost kind of paranoid on here, but that looks fine enough, really, so. There, that's really all we needed to do. We just need to remove the solder there, and that's the end. So, <laughs> with that, uh, I'll go ahead and tin my uh, iron again, and turn it off, and we'll be good to go. So, that's the good news. Um, if you are terrified of soldering, that's really all the soldering that you have to do. I'm going to put this back in the bag for now. Now, guess what? We get to mess with the actual drive here. So for this, there are, from what I see, five screws I need to remove here, 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 and then we need to disconnect the ribbon, which I'll go ahead and do right now. There we go. So you just pull back on it. Well, you release the hatch, pull back on it, so that's all done. Uh, and now, let me go ahead and remove these five screws gently. Uh, I'll wait on these here. Come on. If I can. Maybe. Possibly. Alright, let me uh, adjust my screw. Well, my screwdriver bit here. It looks like I'll need a J0 instead of a Phillips head. Still Phillips, but this one's going to be sharper, I guess. Nope. Okay. It's not going to work. Let's try a J1. J1 seems to be doing the trick. So, we got that. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to kind of put these in the position where they were at. So here, let me remove this guy. Number two is there, and it looks like, yeah, that is loose already, which is a good sign. And there are these two next up. Just letting you all see right there. Come on. Okay. And last one. Come on. There we go. Um, okay. Done. All those are done. So with this part, I believe you're able to just kind of move it out of place. If I remember correctly from the last time I did this. Yep. Okay. So you can just kind of move that out of the way. And now, let me see what we can do. Oh, all right. That end up just getting released there. So we got that. You know, I didn't even have to do that all the way. I'll just move that. Oh, my hands are a little bit dirty, but that's what's going to happen here. And if possible, there we go. Laser's been removed. So old laser is out. And as you can see right there, I don't know if, how well you all can see, but that one has no, la no solder on those points. So now, I'm just being very careful to not touch the laser lens. We can just pop this back on the exact same way. So, maybe, maybe, possibly, eh. Yeah. 
So what I'm going to do is, there, this is loaded on, perfect, alright, and I'll go ahead, load this all back on here. Okay, I think we're good, there we go, everything's navigating like that, so, eh, you know what, I'll just get these screwed on. <laughs> And then we'll be okay. We'll, we'll worry about that other stuff later on. But I yeah, know now we can just work backwards. So I kind of just have to put these pieces back on here. Excuse me. But at this point, all I'm really going to do is work backwards. So I put these, well, I remove these in the order. Oh, they were in. I placed them back in that way. So these will go back here. And again, it's been a while since I did this, but now that I'm doing this, I, I remember I didn't even have to remove all of these all the way. I think I just had to remove two, and it worked out well enough. Okay, can I get this going? Maybe. Okay. Let me go ahead and get this screwed in right there. All right, and there's two more screws that I have to pop in here. But so far, well, I also have to get this realigned here. Okay, there. So let me get this all screwed in, possibly if I can. So that should at least keep that in place. Now I just need to do this last one. This is probably the most tedious part, maybe the worst part of this, but it's not that bad. Unless you can't solder, then understandably so. You might say, you know, removing that solder blob is going to be the worst, but it's not that bad. So, done. We just have, well, done with all those little tabs. We just have one last piece that we need to put on, which is going to be this part right here. And just make sure it stays on like that. There we go. That all looks well and good. But of course, we have to screw it in place. So this should be. Okay, and of course, I'm going to have to change out my bit again. <laughs> so I'm just changing this out right here. Let me. Man, I have to go to like one of my smallest bits for this one. Let me go ahead, pop this in, screw it in. Is it done? That's it. All right, and now, again, all we have to do is work backwards. So let's just pop this ribbon in, latch it in. All right, and there we go. And this is kind of just what I try and do here. Oh, looks like that's all in place. That's all well and good, so. All right, perfect. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is, hopefully, so that was probably the entertaining part right there. I would hope it was the entertaining part. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, really all I have to do at this point is retest. So again, I'm not worried about the, the rest of the drive piece itself. I'm not worried about the laser um, now that it's been replaced. We just have to screw this all in. Will this bit work? No, I need a bigger bit. Stand by. All right, so again, that is it. Now, if this does work, then this will be a successful $5 fix. As you can see, um, outside of taking things apart and using that soldering iron, it's really not that much effort right here. If you're confident enough or you're willing to at least give this a shot, um, it just might be, it might not be as worth it for some people. I know when I've uh, told some of my friends, because a few of my friends had the open tray air and they want to try and fix it themselves, I told them how to do it, and when I mentioned everything, they're just like, oh, no, 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 I'm not trying that. Um, or you might just want to get a new disk drive that when I don't know it's your call. Uh, but we have everything back in place, so I'm going to pop this into 360. All right, so for this portion, this will be the fun part. This will be the test. I'll just pop the bottom on here. All I'm going to do is hook this up to data and power and load it in place like so. And let's go ahead and power this thing up and give it a try. All right, so, so far the only thing I've done is make sure the system powers on. It works successfully, but I haven't tried a disk in here yet, so let's go ahead 
power this thing on. Oh, it did not make that noise before. Hold on, what the hell is going to happen? <laughs> All right. There we go. You might have heard the 360 in the background there. I'm just going to wait for the menu to fully load up and I can inject it from here. All right, so it says open tray. Opens up like that. Let's pop in Diablo. Hmm, okay. Well then, it doesn't like something. As you can see, it like barked at me there. It physically jumped. Let's even try this again. Maybe I need to move this a bit downwards. Let, like so. All right, there's something that's not liking, so let's give this another shot. Let's go ahead, take it apart, and see what's going on. See what could be causing that. Well, guys, this is a uh, terrifying to say the least. I want to see if you all can see what's wrong with that can't let me uh, let me zoom in here I opened it up it was like this <laughs> the screw it can't come off it ended up getting right here all right uh, I've never seen that before <laughs> all right so let's try and screw this back in and see if we can fix that up <laughs> all right so that could have been absolutely terrifying and terrible to say the least. All right, so again, let's go ahead, take two. Look at this. Can I screw this in? I can't screw this in all the way, and that is a little bit concerning. You know what? You know what? This might be a fault of the actual laser itself because I just realized this wasn't an issue. There was no issue with this screw going in here on the previous laser. But on this new laser, there is an issue here, clearly. <laughs> All right, so that might be a little bit of a uh, of a build quality issue. Hopefully not, hopefully not. Um, but what I did was, again, let's... All right, so I screwed it back in as much as it would go. Let's go ahead and pop this all back in here. Nothing's moving around there, which is a good sign. I'm going to screw this all back in and let's give it another shot. All right, so again, let's try this a second time. So, booting up the console. Maybe. Oh, you know what? Thankfully. All right, so let's try this a second time here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's see what the hell happens. Okay, so it comes out. Yeah, and it's on that side. All right, so we're still having the same issue. Go ahead, turn this off. And let's see what we can do. I want to see if that screw came off again. Yep, I hear it. I hear it. As soon as, yep, I flipped it over and I heard it. So it's that screw. And again, I don't think it's a screw. I feel like it's the laser itself. So, again, quality control issue, possibly, maybe. We don't know, but methinks that's what it is. All right, so let me go ahead. Ugh. Take this all off. Where the hell is it? <laughs> all right, so now I don't even know where the screw is. Hold on. I hear it. Okay, there we go. So, there is something wrong with this. Really, on the laser itself, the problem that I'm running into now is that everything should, in theory, should, I'm saying should, fit. It doesn't, though. Okay, that all seems pretty stable in place. Let, let, me, let me try this one more time. Maybe third time's a charm. Maybe I am screwing this up. <laughs> all right, again, third time. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Again, that's that's gonna get loose again. Cause I, I can't fully screw it down, unfortunately. 
and once the laser starts moving that thing pops up and it is game over oh boy that's actually really disappointing so quality control with this laser damn it and yep no so what i did was i tried to hack this up a little bit here <laughs> i tried to uh pop the screw in at the bottom and it does go through and it can stay in place but it's not uh it's not going to keep this thing down unfortunately so wow that is really disappointing it's the laser itself it's the laser itself all right so we're gonna have to be on standby a bit unfortunately uh, I'm gonna have to I'll contact the seller I'll get another laser we'll see what's going on but that is that that's disappointing there I want to get this all done here all right so check this out we have the drive open again I just ripped apart the system uh, at a later date uh, open this up for now I haven't taken out everything yet but we do have a second laser right here so this is another of the same type and I have not opened this yet so let's see how this goes and what I did was with the other laser I ended up just um, check this out check this out uh, no what I was saying was with the other laser uh, I end up taking that and uh, I just contacted the seller I sent it back so hopefully I'll get refunded I better get refunded for it uh, and I bought this uh, the same night I did that and uh, it was nice because I was able to return that and right when I sent it off I end up getting this right here so perfect really no lag time on that that looks fine to me so far hmm the lay the eye itself has a bit of a blue tint to it which is interesting I'd rather it be black tinted but oh well we'll see how well this works here uh, and again we just need to make sure that the screw hole is actually okay for this so um, I'm going to just put this over to the side here uh, so I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to save some time just reinstall it back in here you all already saw me remove the uh, the blob which let me find that again yeah you guys already saw me remove that and uh, install the laser in so I'm just going to do that off camera install it real quick because it's going to be the exact same process we just want to make sure this is working properly all right, so I got the new laser installed. Uh, this one seems like it might still be eh, not not as tight as I'd like it to be, but it actually fits in there properly. And I even tried to move this back and forth a bit just by hand. It's not popping off, so that's good. Uh, so I was able to, again, uh, get the uh, anti-static blob removed, uh, pop this all in, all that good stuff. Everything seems to be fine right now, so... The only thing I can do is put the drive together and let's test this out again. Uh, again, this is the exact same process, just with a second laser. All right, so got the console right here partially assembled, got the disk drive all put back together, got my copy of Diablo 3 right here. Now I have turned this on twice and uh, good news on that so far. I have not tried disk in here though, but we turned on. As you can hear, it sounds pretty normal for a light on disk drive in a FAT360. So. Everything boots up just fine. Let me go ahead and eject this here. And I'll pop in a game and see if this works. So let me grab Diablo 3. Yeah, I'm just going to push it in. Screw it. All right. I hear it. That's good. Now let's come over here. Oh. There we go. Play game. And I'm going to wait for it to recognize. Play Diablo 3. I have never gotten a disc-based game to work on here. And I forgot, I have this controller still synced up to it. So let's make sure this works. I'm going to press A. Wait a few seconds. Come on. I mean, you can hear this thing. Just listen. It's definitely spinning up. It's making that horrible noise, but oh well. Disk drives are weird. <laughs> but no, it works. Look at that. Look at that. It actually works. Fantastic. Again, let's go ahead and check this again. So I'll just come over here, eject. So it's going to quit out of the game. I'm just waiting for that to change. Yep, there we go. All right, push this back in. And come over here. And come on. Perfect. 
there we go. And so check this out as an added bonus, I'll also show you another piece of functionality this has. Now, I have flashed the disk drive on this already, and in case you don't know, that means that I have taken the disk drive's firmware, dumped it, and then created a custom firmware with the DVD key specifically from this drive uh, that enables it now to play backed up burned games and all that fun stuff. So I want to show you all that. That functionality should work as well too. So I actually have a copy of Skate 3 right here. And just to verify this, I do have a legitimate copy of Skate 3. This is actually a really good example to use because I don't know how well you all can see it, but the uh, I got this given to me for free like years ago from a game shop and they couldn't sell this because this thing was like cracking on the inside and everything. The disc works, but... I mean, you heat it up enough and use it enough, and this thing's just going to splinter through with enough time. So, that's why we got the copy right here, obviously. So, I'll wait a bit. Alright, it's spinning up. That's a good sign. Let me come over here. No, nope, going to drop my tools, but okay. And play game. And there we go. Skate 3. Press A on this. Wait a few seconds. Thing, of course, has to sound like a jet engine, but oh well, that's the Xbox 360. And there we go, Skate 3 is working. Again, uh, let me, if I can, let me just, I dropped my tool, so I'm doing this all with one hand, and I got to uh, do this just with the controller right here. But everything is showing up on the menu there, Skate 3, press eject, and burn disc is working, so that's all working as expected. Fantastic, I'm happy about that. All right, so now with everything reassembled, I got uh, one more test for this. So what I did is I just ended up grabbing a hard drive, put it up top on the console right here, and just to make sure that this laser is actually working properly, what I normally do is take a hard drive, pop it on, or a USB drive, it's formatted, whatever it is, and pop a disc in here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to initiate a install of the disc. So. Let me go ahead, back out of here. All right, cool. Reading, 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 reading. Loud. There we go. All right, cool. So let me go over to Game Details, Install. Wait a bit. And pop it onto the hard drive. And what I do to test this, I normally install like one or two games, and if they read 100% successfully, then we are good to go at that point. And also, this one should work a little bit harder since that is a burned disc. Um, if it fails with this, then not really the best sign, but if it can tear through this, then we're really good to go. Alright, so we're getting just about to the end of the process right here, but I haven't heard the disc slow down, I haven't heard any other weird laser issues. This has been reading just fine, and... Of course, it got past layer break, so no issue with that, but if we wait a couple seconds here, there we go. Game installation completed, so I'm going to test one more game, and I'll give you my reasons why for doing that. So let's go ahead and pop out Skate 3. Do not need this. And uh, I'm going to test out one more game, which is going to be Zone of the Enders HD Collection. So just showing you all, this is the legitimate disc. As you can see, store-bought, all that other good stuff, if I have to flip it over. Sure, okay. <laughs> and then this is the backup copy we got right here. So, go ahead, pop this in, close it up. The reason why I'm doing this is because this is a XGD3 title. You see, this one is a XGD2 disc, kind of a, just an older standard Xbox 360 game. This one's XGD3, which uh, has to be burned a bit different and requires, you know, the newer Light Touch 3 firmware for this drive uh, and all that other fun stuff. So, if this works, first off, I mean, it's reading and everything. This should boot up right here. Because, again, I flash it to the latest firmware, so that's really not an issue. And there we go. It boots up. So I'll just go ahead, quickly eject the disk. And we'll give this an install. Again, these are normally... XGD3 games are normally a bit more uh, intense with the drive. That's actually why if you try some of the later revisions of Xbox 360 games, you might notice even if you install the game to your system for about three or five minutes, it's still spinning. Yeah, that's an XGD3 disc. It's doing extra, uh, anti-piracy protection and all that fun stuff and doing extra security checks. So, I'll go ahead and install this. Wait a bit. All right, that came up. And there we go, let's wait another few minutes for this. Alright, so left this here for a little bit, but as you can see, I'll go ahead and press continue right here. 
Zone of the Enders did install, so we have a full installation of this. So I would say at this point that the uh, the laser has been replaced and the repair is complete here. I was able to uh, get a few games working and do two full installs, so I think we're ready to rock at that point. Anyways, that is it for this episode of Let's Repair. Again, this has been a Jasper motherboard Xbox 360, light on drive, laser replacement. First laser replacement didn't go so well. Second one, looks like we're on point. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. But if you hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too.